Good morning, everyone. My name is Tom Robinson. I'm the co-founder of, co of Elliptic, which is working to detect and prevent the criminal use of cryptocurrencies. So cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin are a transformative technology. However, they have features which mean that they are increasingly becoming the payment method of choice for cyber criminals. And this is a global problem affecting Japan as any country. So for example, here we have uh, Dream Market, probably the world's largest dark marketplace, where a range of illicit goods and services can be purchased with cryptocurrency. And here we can actually see a Japanese vendor selling prescription drugs on this site for Bitcoin. On the same site, we have a counterfeit Japanese passport, which again can be purchased for Bitcoin. This site is called Joker's Stash. On this site, there are tens of thousands of uh, stolen credit card details that you can purchase, again with Bitcoin. And you can see here that there are a number of cards for sale which have been issued by Japanese banks. Recent reports have also said that cases of money laundering in Japan linked to cryptocurrency went up by a factor of 10 in 2018. So there is a problem here. What can we do about it? Well, luckily, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are not anonymous. When you transact in Bitcoin, you do so through an address. It can be thought of a bit like an email address. And the details of all transactions are recorded in the blockchain. What you don't have recorded here is any concept of real world identity. And so what we do at Elliptic using data science and collection techniques is link these addresses to real world entities, be they cryptocurrency exchanges, wallet services, and also criminal entities such as ransomware operators, dark marketplaces, and so on. And so on top of this capability, on top of this technology and data, we have built two primary products. The first is a compliance solution for cryptocurrency exchanges. So the challenge they face is that they are receiving many, many transactions every day in cryptocurrency on behalf of their clients. But they have no way of knowing where those cryptocurrencies have come from. And they need to know for regulatory purposes. What our software enables is it lets them identify whether a given transaction has come from a criminal source. So I want to show you a quick demo of this. So here we have a transaction that an exchange has received. I'm going to show you how we would screen it in our AML software. So this is the software. Here we see a list of transactions that we have screened in the past. And I'm now going to enter the transaction we just saw. And what the software will do is it will give back a risk score between 0 and 10, where 0 is low risk and 10 is high risk. And so for this transaction, what we see at the top is a risk score of 10 out of 10. We can now drill down and see why it has that high risk score. And what we see is that 100% of the funds in this transaction originated from Dream Market, that dark marketplace we, store, we saw at the beginning. And we can also get a visualization of this. So this is a direct transfer of cryptocurrency from Dream Market on the left to our exchange on the right. So we have allowed the exchange to identify that this transaction is criminal. They can then block the transaction or take other appropriate actions to ensure that they are not laundering that money. And this software is used by most of the major cryptocurrency exchanges around the world. Our second product is a solution for banks. So whether they are aware, aware of it or not, every bank in the world is probably exposed to financial crime risk from cryptocurrencies. So when a cyber criminal wants to cash out, the way that they will do that is they will exchange their crypto for yen on an exchange, 
and then transfer it through a bank to their account. And so the bank has a problem. They might well be receiving proceeds of cybercrime that have originated in cryptocurrency, but they have no visibility of this. But again, we can provide a solution. Using our software, the banks can work out where those cryptocurrencies have come from and see whether they have originated from criminal activity. So as an example of this, I want to show you a demo where we're going to look at the Mt. Gox Bitcoin exchange. Now, of course, Mt. Gox is no longer operational. However, we can go back and look at historical transactions and see where the Bitcoins originated from. So this is Elliptic Forensics, our investigation software. And it allows us to um, graphically explore transaction links between entities. And so what we have here is the Bitcoin wallet um, used by the Mt. Gox exchange. And what we can start doing is exploring where the inflow of funds came from for this exchange. And what we see is a, a series of other cryptocurrency exchanges, the likes of Bitstamp, uh, Huobi, OKPay. So nothing really surprising here. But what we can also do is look to see whether any funds have been received from criminal entities. And we can do that by focusing on high risk score wallets. And what we see is that funds have been received from a number of dark marketplaces. So this probably represents Mt. Gox users buying and selling goods on those markets. And we can also see Joker's stash. This is the credit card, stolen credit card vendor we saw at the start. So this is valuable information for the bank. They can see um, this activity and prevent money laundering through their bank. So to conclude, I want to call on two types of business to speak to us, crypto exchanges and banks. We can help you to identify these transactions and prevent you from laundering proceeds of crime. Thank you. All right, thank you, Tom.